after making this painting, I realized that my colors look very much like dull browns and ochres. And this is really like a summer scene, so it needs more greens. I looked back at my sketch and at the um, photo, and also I've been walking around this area, and it's definitely more green. So what I'm doing on this part is making this painting uh, a little bit nicer in terms of the colors. I do like how this is coming out. And I, as I don't know if you noticed, but I did scratch the tree trunks and this was off camera. So there's a little bit more definition on this tree and this red tree here. Uh, I do like the way this looks. I don't know if I'm gonna change the sky. There's a mistake here in the reflections. Uh, this piece should not be there. The reflection is more like this and then that big tree is reflecting here. So this should be more blue. However, let's focus on getting the greens right first. To do that, I off camera, I made these combinations. This is a very nice purple. You will be seeing it. I'm going to apply that for the deep uh, deeper shadows here. Maybe I made too much, but that's fine because I save my my mixes in the freezer so I can use this. This is a combination of alizarin and crimson and thalo cyan and green, and it's not fully mixed. Some areas have more alizarin and crimson and some of them have more green. I like it that way because then when I put the brush stroke, sometimes it's more uh, purple, sometimes it's more bluish, greenish, and I like that change. This combination is using thalo, cyan, and green, and yellow ochre. So I made a little bit of this. This is yellow ochre with ultramarine blue. You can see the difference between these two. So if you can see, yellow ochre is a warm yellow, but it does have red and blue in the mix. And when I put it with ultramarine blue, which has a red bias, uh, comparing this with this, which might be a similar value, this looks cooler. Thalo cyan in green has a blue bias. So I think there's more bluish tones in this one and this one. So even though they might be a uh, similar value compared to the gray, one looks warmer than the other. And this one here is the same mix, but with a little bit more of ultramarine blue. I wanted to have like two different tones with the same combination of yellow ochre and ultramarine blue. In the bottom, we have now the cadmium yellow. So this is cadmium yellow with ultramarine blue, and this is cadmium yellow with thalocyanin in green. Uh, yeah, thalocyanin in green. And this is the same, but it's thalo green is like, I mentioned before, like kryptonite. I think this is what Jessica Henry calls it. Uh, it needed just a tiny bit of thalo green with the cadmium yellow to get this bright. This is warmer than this one, but this has more saturation of color, which is what thalo green gives us. So I've got thalo green here, ultramarine here, uh, the yellow ochre here, and the cadmium yellow here. And this is a purple blue. Uh, purple with actual alizarin crimson and thalo cyan in green. So I am now using a size six because I want to build on this. I believe this far end might look better once I refine this. And I also don't like this shape of the of the bridge. This is a very straight bridge. Maybe if I make some changes in there. So this is still a little bit wet from last time that I painted about two days ago, but it's, it's tacky, so that should be okay. Let's begin with some uh, shadow areas in this end, and I hope you can see I'm holding the brush really loose um, in almost the end of the brush. And I'm just uh, grabbing the this. I'm not actually putting it exactly uh, how I see it. It's, I wanna cover more of the, of the end here. 
So again, I want more of a sort of blur vision. I don't want the vision to go here. I want it to go here. But the darks in here are gonna help me move it. And if you can see some areas picked up more red and some others picked up more of the phthalo green. So I think that should be okay. For these areas of darkness in here, we should be okay building maybe just, just a tiny bit in here that had a little bit of that uh, dark area so that it actually looks like this is hanging over. And also, I mean, this one here was, it became a, a little bit uh, too bright at the end. So it's, I'm just really scumbling with a very soft touch. That's it for the dark. Um, I can probably use the same brush. I know that I keep doing that and maybe I shouldn't be doing that. However, um, we are going to be starting to use some of the greens and because we build from dark to light, I think it should be okay. So the next green, uh, darker green that I want to introduce uh, would be in this area. And for this area, I want to use uh, this darker, it's ultramarine with uh, the yellow ochre. And if you see, I just put it in the, in the tip of my brush. I don't need to have a chiseled edge for this one. And, and again, it's just making this look a bit more green rather than uh, earthy color that I had before. And it might actually be mixing with a little bit of the lighter color, and it's going to definitely be mixing a little bit with what I just added, but that's fine um, for, for these kind of things. So I just want to, see, when I put it, by the side or near where I had just added the dark, it doesn't look that dark. But of course, if I put it here, it looks darker because everything is uh, seen in comparison. And now that I am seeing this, I think it might benefit from having a little bit of dark in this area too. I like how the depth is built with the dark. So why don't we just come here? I haven't actually um, even wiped the brush because and it's, I don't want to be too, too specific in what I am describing here. Uh, it's just, I just want it to be a bit darker in here. And then I will come back. Of course, this is grass and it's near us. So I'm trying to just move the brush with the movements of what this grassy area would be. I think this is already improving in terms of looking more green, which is the way that I wanted it. I hope it's not too dark for you. I had to use the umbrella because it's really bright. Let me try if I close the umbrella. Yeah, you're gonna get a, 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 a glare in there. So I'll just open the umbrella again. Okay, I think, I think you will be seeing this is lo looking more green. Um, there are, probably some of those uh, green areas. Now, of course, this brush has dark green and, uh, and the dark um, purple. So if I just try to do this, uh, this is uh, overhanging, but it's definitely greener uh, because it's summertime. So this should have been really, greener than that. And, and this is just dry brushing, scumbling on top. Uh, I do like that purple. As I mentioned before, it's not very um, realistic, but I do like it. So I might be able to keep it. Now I'm gonna go a touch uh, lighter and I'm gonna be using this again, the ultramarine um, for a little bit lighter, but same kind of green. Now I'm making what I had before as very ochre color. I am making it now a bit more greener. And probably, um, yeah, probably a little bit in here. So it's, it's not all, you know, boringly same color. And obviously you don't wanna have boring paintings. <laughs> okay, um, I think I'm gonna be using the cooler for the rest of this area here. 
and let's try to see well this was the brightest that i had in my in my sketch because the sun's hitting here and i think i had somehow a shadow here it must have been a tree that i was under producing this shadow but it's definitely this diagonal shadow i like because it sort of brings this that's why i took the photo that way because it sort of brings your eye this way so why don't we then go before i introduce the lightest light in there let's go a little bit with what i have here for the cooler green and let's see if you can still see the difference of the warmer and the cooler uh, honestly sometimes it's really hard to know well is it is this warmer is this cooler and i've seen a lot of descriptions of uh, discussions saying is the warmest red or is the warmest uh, yellow i think the warmest in the wheel in the, in the color wheel um is orange which is the opposite of the coolest which is blue but of course then we have cool blues and warm blues so it's not just a, a characteristic of the color and in this particular painting i did want to work on this concept of cool and warm so this actually it's the combination of thalocyanin with cadmium so it's not a very um, natural color and i am actually debating if i should probably just add a tiny bit of the red well it wasn't that tiny <laughs> uh, a little bit of the red which is the alizarin crimson to mute it down a little bit and this is supposed to be cooler than what i had here in, in my mind, at least, uh, it's cooler. And I think that I need to use more of the cooler colors in the back because the cool colors make images recede and the warmer colors make the images come closer. So at least here, I am already getting a bit of the greener that I wanted to get. And there's gonna be a bright, brighter, area so to make the brighter area look bright it's better if it's by a dark area and this is happening already even this is not my lightest green so yeah i think it worked okay mixing this one with with that alizarin crimson because i think this would make it weird it is it is um already looking like I have more green than I had before. Before it looked very, very ochre. <laughs> That's not what I actually wanted for that painting. I am tempted to soften that a little bit, but I will come back later to that. And I know that I wanted to keep that purple. It's looking very odd, but if I now start working on it, I'm gonna get rid of the transparency. So I'm gonna be patient and wait. Okay, so one thing that I do need to do is bring down some of these colors of the green in here because at the beginning when I put this, if you see my original, my first part of this, of creating this painting, this looked really bright against the purple, but that's because I only had the darks in there. Um, but I think that for the reflections, we need to at least make them talk to the painting a little bit more in the sense of sort of same colors coming here. It's looking a bit too much thalo green for my taste. So I might, I might just go slightly with, with this other green. Now the reflections should be always darker than what they reflect. And because I have the transparent color in the back, in, in, the, in the first layer, I think it's going to be looking fine. And sometimes, you know, you go down, but sometimes I like to sort of do the, the wavy, wavy things for 
this. And, and that's what gives the impression of transparency also. All right, so I think we are ready to be daring. And in this area, it's lighter. And so maybe because it's farther from us, let's, let's see how, how this works. And I'm just flicking it. I'm not putting a lot of impasto paint in there because the phthalo cyan in green with the, with the yellow, cadmium yellow looks um, a bit, a bit too fantastic, a bit too artificial. I, I used the other day that term and I think, I think it's the correct way, but you can see that I am apply, trying to apply it in a way that I'm not getting rid completely of the, what was behind. So it still looks light. Um, it is good because it's the cooler green. So I wanna use the cooler greens for the highlights in the back, as I mentioned, with the idea that it would be making, making them recede. And um, this area here, Ooh, that was a bit too impasto, which I didn't want to do. But, you know, you just work with it. Okay. Yeah, because this is also catching a bit of the light. It's mixing with the previous um, application I had. So I'm going to try to, I think I mixed way too much paint. <laughs> Oh no, that's the, that's the warmer one. I didn't want the warm one. I'm still working on the cool one. I hope you, <laughs> you didn't have like a heart attack saying, what you doing? So you can see, I'm just putting the, the light where the light should be picking up on this particular end. And because I added that sort of darker area, the, the light, always looks better when when you have it by some area of dark but but i do believe that the use of this cooler lighter green in here it's helping in establishing a bit better the forms that i had and and i'm being very gentle in some areas i just don't want to have too many brush strokes and in in other areas where I want your eye to go, it's it's fine to have a little bit more of these brush strokes. And again, bring it down a little bit. Now this is the area where it should be sort of reflecting some of these lighter. Whoops, not that much. Beauty of I think it's looking better. I think it does now make a bit more sense that it's now more green. And here, it wasn't really that dark. I think I exaggerated a bit with the dark. So because this is uh, a la prima now, because I just added that that particular layer of dark, putting this light color on top. And as you can see, I am not um cleaning the brush yet i'm just uh, flicking and when i grab more paint i don't get rid of the dark behind because the lightest area was uh around here so that i think overall that's looking better um this here should be definitely lighter but what i'm going to do to make it even cooler you probably guessed, is adding white. So none of these mixtures have white. I have just made them lighter with yellow. But before I go and add the white, let's do this area of the warm colors and see if it's going to work fine. Now, I don't need to clean the brush for this. And this, this area really had a lot more of these kind of uh, warmer, but it was definitely not yellow. And what's happening is that um, because I just am working on, on the peas that I was working before, this is still 
tacky what before what had white and it's working fine because like I said I mean I don't want to describe each blade of grass I just want to make this look uh, in the light and one thing I'm already noticing is that even though in contrast this does look lighter it's still not like super bright and it's probably because the white is actually the, the white from the layer before it's making it a bit cooler so let's first go ahead and introduce this uh, color of the areas that were it was like this bank here comes it actually sort of pops up here and then it comes down here so this was getting sort of more direct light from the sun and it doesn't mean that even though this was in the dark um, doesn't mean that there's not light also catching up there now this brush has picked up some of that dark which is fine because I don't want to make it too light here but it's not bad to have some areas here I keep saying here here <laughs> okay some areas also in the front that may be catching a bit more of the of the light now, now that looks a bit greener which is what I intended does it look bright enough light enough now there's here these blades of grass now one of the challenges that I'm finding here is that these blades of grass are almost the same tone as the water I painted and of course that's making it difficult for the eye to see so what I might need to do next is to mix a little bit of the just fixing this because I don't want it to look weird so yeah there's a an area of shadow and then an area of, of light and sometimes you can see I'm flicking it up don't hold your brush like this like a pen I mean unless you like to do tiny little things the reason why we like the long handles is because you can be more free you will also have less hand pain which is an important thing when you get to be a certain age um, well I guess it's an important thing when you are any age but um, if you do this for a long time you want to make sure you can paint uh, until your older age, like Michelangelo, 90 some years old, I think he was when he died. Um, I think painters either died too young of starvation or too old because I guess it's a great profession. It's a hobby for me. I'm just making this, establishing a bit more of the darks. And as you can see, I'm just. Uh, kissing the canvas just just ever so slightly and fortunately the bristles are a little bit separated so they're giving me an interesting shape of these grasses and I definitely want to make sure these these were in a, in a shadow I think it looks more summer now. I think I did improve the colors. I hope that you enjoyed so far. One thing that I would like to do in addition is that um, in this farther area, and I'm going to be mixing the cold with the warm. So we're still painting with temperature in mind. I think this is way too dark. Although I like the purple shadows, uh, I mean reflections, sometimes they may look too dark. 
let's fix this area here and let's just put why not a little bit more of that green here and I think we're almost ready now for that blue the color of the uh, water I don't I don't think I need to change that I'm going to use a larger one I was using the same number six, Simply Simmons. You can see the description below, and I encourage you to look at part one, where I painted the previous version. Uh, I'm looking now on a, at a size eight. Am I going to be doing size eight? Um, yeah, that's, that's fine. All right, so now for the water, I want a clean area. And as I explained in my previous video, I like to keep uh, in my in my palette very very good separation of areas when you want a cleaner color it's always good to have them i don't always use a vertical palette only when i'm taping so this is not like the normal for me but i i keep the places separate now with the water i always like to put a little bit of the of the thalo because it gives a nicer turquoise color, which is warmer. Well, I don't know. Uh, it is different from having just the ultramarine blue. Sometimes the ultramarine blue alone can look a bit more purple. And sometimes this actually, the whole ultramarine blue blob, which is coming out of the tube, could look purplish. Um, this is probably too to greenish and as you probably remember from last time so these are the same tone or they look very similar but one has the green tint and the other one is more of the blue which is fine I mean I, I like to to mix them and now I'm just doing dry brushing um, some of these areas had the idea of the bushes in here And of course, the, the brush has a, a, a little bit of a mix. And then it, it comes to the place where then you can see that particular tree top reflected. It's, it's weird because the tree top was like splayed like that, but the, the, sh the reflection doesn't look that much but I might actually just do it uh, a little bit. Well, it's weird anyway. Okay, now I think I need just a little bit of the darker, maybe maybe even a, a little bit of the darker that I had there. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah it's not, not working that bad. So I love painting water, I think if you've seen some of my other videos, uh, you will see that I say this a lot because I remember how scared I was the first time that I painted water and it was seawater in a workshop that I did. And I had no idea. You know, I thought, oh my God, how am I ever going to do that? And the teacher in particular mentioned, well, just follow the movement of the water with your brush and you know it it does work i mean not always <laughs> uh, but uh, it does work okay i i went for the lighter one because definitely here it should be a bit lighter and i think this is giving a, a nicer brighter thing so this is technically not anymore an a la prima painting because underneath what I did the other day is already um, dry and I probably went too much here. So with the painting knife and some people use uh, Q-tips, you can just fix whatever you painted and then just go over again. I think that the fact that we're seeing some of my previous strokes here is not, it's not bad, no, it does, doesn't bother me. Um, this is a straight line, so in here we should have more of a line that 
would make sense with with this and again you know this dry brushing for effects of the water work really well because sometimes the reflection actually moves so it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly the same as you see in the top but you know at least it should have some some idea of what you are seeing reflected here and this definitely had this sort of so the the brush had the hairs splayed and i just didn't want to necessarily do that so i'm just going to be gently sort of going over here and sort of giving the impression that we are seeing a bit of um, that tree reflected definitely the reflection of that tree does not match the tree exactly so you know what i think i did was wrong i think it should all be more of a reflection because this doesn't read well so i hope that you enjoy when you see me sort of fixing sometimes some of these um brush strokes so that you have fun don't be afraid of adding some more brush strokes if something doesn't work especially if you're working in acrylics or oils they're very forgiving I think for pastels, you really need to master the pastel because you can very quickly create mud that you don't want to if you start putting things on top. And definitely this reflection was sort of dark, but I don't think I want it that dark. And I think this became a bit too white. White is a very good color for tinting uh, but you have to be careful because it can get to be seen a little bit chalky and uh, that's what I think was happening uh, this particular reflection was a little bit off and I think I did mention in other videos that I have I tend to tilt my head a lot and sometimes my verticals become not very vertical and my horizontals for the water sometimes the water is <laughs> going in the wrong direction flowing up or or down so this is what i was telling you uh, as i was painting this that this row of sort of grasses became a little bit too much of a straight line so with the color of the water you can get in there and I don't really mind if it mixes. Um, a, a little bit mixing is not bad because you can incorporate that color into the color that you were using for the water. And, and the good thing about the water is that water reflects uh, the colors that you have. So this was definitely a bit less dark. So I'm just using the color of the water vertical for the reflections and yeah I think I think this is gonna make these reflections read a bit better sometimes it brings a little bit of the transparency and I'm just grabbing a mid-tone blue and you know with water it's just a matter of um, work on it make sure that uh, you every so often stop to see what you've just done and check that the tone is correct this reflection in here was a little bit strange because i don't really see that much there so that's gonna be a little bit smaller and definitely needs more white as I mentioned in my previous installment of this painting the Windsor Newton artisan line that I love 
that is the one that I use for the painting, has a titanium white that doesn't have, in at least in my experience, my own hands, it doesn't have a very strong ting, 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 ting. So I need to add a lot more white with very little of the color that I'm mixing with it um, for the effect that I want. Did you see I just wiggled uh, so that I can get a better idea that, you know, as, as you go farther, the, the, the lines of the waves should be thinner, smaller. And as you come closer, they are larger. I did say I did not like the way that the bridge uh, looked like. And I think that uh, that bridge, it's kind of too boringly straight. It's also a bit too dark. So what I'm going to be doing, what am I going to do? I think, I think a blue might be okay. So this is the ultramarine blue, I believe, that I had for here. So I think the blue might actually work fine. This was a clean brush, by the way. Um, and I think that I just have to, maybe just a bit more of the ultramarine blue here. just a bit boring isn't it I didn't really like it that much okay I'm gonna go for the dark purple that I had and I'm just going to with the chiseled edge I'm just going to try to make this sort of a having like a round shape and I do that by just pressing and lifting, pressing and lifting, and getting, hopefully, a bit more of a curved area here. Yeah, I didn't really like that flat, dark thing in there. And of course, uh, these parts of the bridge, I think I was looking at the bridge right straight because I don't see the under part of it. And I, I do want to make this more like a bluer. Maybe it's reflecting a bit of the color of the water. I mean, I don't know, I'm making this up, up completely, but I just didn't like the way that it looked like. So the reflection would also have to be a little bit of, a, of an angled, shape here and it's not very dark but I think that's okay um, and then I think I think now we have the greener greens it, now it's more like a summer painting I hope that you see the difference it's pulling at least my eye it's going to the mystery of what's in there I don't know what it's there but it's the contrast of the darker and the lighter areas. Yeah, there's one more thing that I thought I was going to do and this is softening this a little bit. So I have the green brush and I'm just sort of pushing what I put before, pushing it down and I think I said I was gonna use a little bit of white to make it go farther. It's not really that necessary. I actually think it's okay. I hope you see the difference between this one cooler, lighter with white. This one is the cool one because it had the, the ultramarine blue. And these are the warmer ones with the cadmium and the thalocyanin in green. So the kit that I use for these paintings has thalocyanin green is the only green. 
And people may get frustrated sometimes because you cannot get, you don't have sap green, which many people are used to. But I hope that with these demos, you can see, I'm just mixing here, the darker ultramarine blue I had with the thalo that I had mixed in here because I think this was a bit too much and I think I need to establish a bit more of that sort of reflection so that it does make sense what are we seeing here and it's just a very gentle kissing of the canvas with the brush not with my lips obviously now I'm gonna try to make it a bit just a bit lighter here so yeah, this reflection was interesting. It was definitely visible, um, but it wasn't that dark because it's uh, it's from a, a little bit of a farther uh, tree in there. And now, just, uh, I mean, this is really up to you. If you like it the way it is, that's fine. But sometimes just adding a bit of the water here with any water, any color you have for water, could be the darker one, could be the lighter one, or could be like you just saw me do, a little bit of a mix. And it's good to, to sometimes just stop yourself. Uh, don't just go dot, 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 like I'm doing. But um, just make sure that you can step back. I did keep that transparent violet which I like. I hope you enjoyed it. I think this is a much better painting than what I had yesterday and it's just a matter of signing it. I've seen Kelly Folsom do this with a wet paint and I've put some of the my preferred video YouTube video professors in the description. So consider subscribing. If you like this put the thumbs up I do think you will see now more of a summery, greener area in this one. Thank you very much for joining and watching this video.